guys, behold, my most epic creation in all my years of ant keeping. A leviathan themed terrarium, the kingdom home to my massive colony of ants. Named the leviathans. Where are the ants you ask? Well, they're already in here. And man, was it a mission. But brace yourselves, because they're about to emerge, for I'm about to feed them for the very first time in this setup. And you guys will be mind blown by how the entire Leviathan themed terrarium comes to life when the ants come out to feast. This is the story of how my greatest ant colony, the Leviathans, found their new home in this, the coolest ant kingdom I've ever made. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, behold our beloved marauder ant colony, the Leviathans, whom we raised from just a tiny budding family in Queen Ant a few months ago to now about to experience a life-changing event. These ants have no idea they're about to undergo something a bit traumatic, an ant apocalypse of sorts, but it's for their own good and necessary for them to enjoy a greater and more abundant life in the new kingdom I've created for them. But guys, keep on watching until the very end as I've got a very important question to ask you and we'll be needing your help by the end of the video. But before we get to moving the ants in, we have a bit of a problem. Okay, a big problem. Listen to this. So if you caught last week's episode, you saw that the Leviathans decided to move into a mansion. I provided the colony, which I gave them a couple weeks back because they looked as though they were outgrowing their main home. This large test tube hidden beneath a castle within their initial terrarium named Marauder's Alley. At first, the ants rejected this mansion I gave them, deciding to stay put within their test tube, despite it getting a bit crowded. I was okay with this, because it meant moving the colony would be much easier once I finished completing their final home, the Leviathan Terrarium Kingdom, which you guys will get to see more later. But then one day, I removed the lid of the mansion to horrifyingly discover it was covered with mold, which was dangerous. So I left it off. And guys, that was enough to get the ants to decide to launch a full-out excavation and move into the mansion. I guess the ants noticed the mold growing on the lid and that's why they rejected it as a nest at first. But now, with no moldy lid, the ants were excavating full force. Even in the night, the ants were non-stop working around the clock, excavating tunnels and chambers within the mansion so they could move the entire colony inside. But guys, as I said, there was a big problem with this. I was still working on finishing the Leviathan Terrarium at this point, and logistically, it would have been so much easier to move the colony into the Leviathan Terrarium if they were still in their test tube. And you'll see why in a bit. But with the ants moving into this mansion now, I knew it would surely be a headache and lead to a lot of ant bites and stings when it did come time to move them. Which, as you'll see later, <laughs> it did. So the solution is simple, right? Just remove the mansion now while I was finishing up the Leviathan tank. Well, AC family, no. Because turns out the ants couldn't wait another day for me to finish their terrarium. I have to show you the colony in their test tube now. Opening the nest. See that guys? Man, this is serious. Brood, brood, and lots of brood. This is easily the most babies I've ever seen hoarded into this test tube. In fact, the brood had now reached all the way to the bottom of the test tube. There's now more brood than soil here. And the most concerning of all was this. The queen our precious titanic empress. That's her. She was now swimming in an ocean of her own brood. A lot of you noticed in their last video that she was not even able to move around the nest like before, just trapped at the bottom of the test tube, which I believe was true. 
So even if the colony did decide to move into the mansion, the ants wouldn't be able to transport the queen, which meant I would need to physically help them transport her, which I absolutely didn't want to risk doing with my clumsy hands. I had no choice but to hurry and finish the Leviathan Terrarium and prep it ASAP before the ants began to officially move the colony into the mansion. Currently, they were just in excavation mode, not yet moving in all the brood, which was good. I still had time. Now, this was a very sensitive moment for the colony because excavation and emigration of an entire colony expends a lot of energy and requires a lot of water and food, lest they work themselves to exhaustion and end up with a lot of dead ants. So I made sure to provide them lots of water at this time because they'd surely be needing it, especially once the great ant apocalypse would happen, which was coming soon. For little did they know, their creator of worlds was working around the clock to perfect and prep the Leviathan Kingdom. My heart jumped into my throat when the very first worker decided to transport the first member of Brood into the mansion. I needed to hurry. Another ant deciding it was time to transport Brood. And another. Pupae now. Thankfully, some ants felt it wasn't time to move and were transporting Brood back into the nest. But I knew I didn't have much time left. I stayed up all night prepping the Leviathan Terrarium until the moment came to finally move the ants in. It was time for the ominous Antpocalypse. Now before I move the ants in, I need to show you this Leviathan Terrarium. It's an epic mystical sea dragon a leviathan, fashioned from pumice and volcanic rock and moss. Truly one of the coolest ant creations I've ever attempted on the channel. What do you guys think? Now I had some help from a skilled rock worker friend to fashion and shape the rock to look just right. And we achieved exactly what I envisioned in my mind and plotted out in my initial sketch of the terrarium. The first thing I want to show you is this. See the fiber optic lights? I felt it gave the rock a slightly mystical character to it. And guys, the mouth of the beast. Oh, this was the coolest. It spewed out a hydrating fog that would keep the lands humid. This fog was coming from a humidifier attached at the back of the tank. It was important that since this was an open concept ant terrarium with no front glass, that the lands be kept humid. So this humidifier was programmed on a timer to turn on and off several times a day. The ants would be kept inside the setup via strategically placed talcum barriers around the edges. Now the head was also attached via a pipe to the nest portion of the terrarium, full of their favorite digging medium, bioactive cocoa fiber. This was where the ants would be living and nesting most of the time. And my idea was for the ants to emerge from the beast's mouth and form feeding trails along the beast's body to and from their food. Marauder ants are known for their iconic and winding trails, so this leviathan body would allow for that natural ant trailing behavior to take place. Well, in theory anyway. I wasn't at all sure if any of this would work. In my mind it would, but there was only one way to find out. It was time to move in the ants and execute Operation and apocalypse. So here was my plan. This all needed to take place in phases. This first phase was to move the main colony in the test tube first. My plan was to quickly remove that castle, then stuff the test tube and gaping hole with lots of cotton. Time to do that now. Here we go. One, two, three. I quickly removed the castle and stuffed the top of the test tube with cotton. The ants panicked and ran about in fear and anger that a giant hand had dropped in from the sky and was stuffing their nest with fluffy white stuff. Ants climbed my hand and immediately began to sting me, but I had to brave the pain and focus on the task. Why didn't I think of wearing gloves? 
From the bottom, I carefully lifted the test tube and pulled the whole thing out, the colony within now exposed. I stuffed the tank hole with more cotton and placed the entire test tube into the nest part of the Leviathan tank. AC family, they were in. Before removing the cotton and freeing the colony into their new home, I took the time to scan the test tube. It looked like they had already moved a lot of brood out and into the mansion. But what I was really interested in was the queen. Where was she? There's an impressive group of majors. The workers were doing their very best to keep the brood grouped together and organized. They were scared, confused, and with their home they always knew, now completely destroyed and transported somewhere foreign, they definitely were going through the greatest catastrophe of their entire lives. And that was when I spotted the queen. Cloaked in her entourage, who protect her and soothed her, assuring her majesty would be all right. The entourage ants were willing to give up their lives for her in this time of confusing crisis. She remained still and calm, watching her colony sorting out the brood. But AC family, the reason I was looking for the queen was because I wanted to take a moment to look at her for what could be the last time I might ever see her. You see, when moving an ant colony into a setup where the ants can dig away from view, once the queen has moved in, chances are we ant keepers would never see the queen again. She would be hidden away from any light by the colony, retreating only within the darkest areas of the nest away from our view. Even if I was intending to cover this digging area part, there was still no guarantee we would ever see the queen again. So it's at this critical transitional moment that I always take the time to enjoy looking at the queen one final time. Thank you, Titanic Empress. It has been my greatest honor to watch you amass your impressive and powerful army. I promise to continue caring for you and your colony to the best of my abilities as your provider and partner. It's now time for you to enjoy the kingdom I prepared for thee, my queen. Goodbye. Tears in my eyes, I removed the cotton and placed the entire test tube deep into the digging medium. Phase A of Operation Apocalypse was complete. I tried to go back and look for the queen, but our titanic empress had already vanished having slipped away into the darkness of the new digging medium to the loving advice of her caring entourage. Now in terms of all the brood, I knew it would take a few days or possibly weeks for them to eventually move them all out. The ants needed to excavate into the digging medium first. Overall, I couldn't believe the colony was officially in and it warmed my heart to no end. Time for phase B. This time with gloves, I placed another clean lid onto the mansion and lifted it out of Marauder's Alley. Don't worry, I would come back for all the ants left behind. But guys, this was the hard part. I had no choice but to just open the mansion and carve away at the digging medium to place it all into the tank. Ants climbed everywhere. I was stung incessantly, but I was surprised to find that the tunnels and chambers weren't that deep but was impressed by how much brood they had already moved in. Now I had to move the ants in this way because if I did it by connecting a tube to allow the ants to move themselves in, there was a pretty high chance the ants would choose to move the whole colony into this mansion and not the terrarium since they've already covered it with homey pheromones and were about to move into it prior to this antpocalypse. I had no choice but to go the intrusive route for moving the ants in this mansion. I brushed all escaped ants into the nest area and those attacking me off my body and stepped back to witness the final stages of their antpocalypse. Just like that, the majority of the colony was in. I arranged things around because I wanted some light to enter the test tube to encourage the ants to move out of it. Eventually when the ants were residing fully in the digging medium and settled in, I could remove all this cotton and the test tube, but definitely not now. The ants were too panicked, aggressive, and just blanketed the entire area. I also gave the colony a freshly cut up roach for nourishment in this energy demanding time and transported their water test tube for hydration. Now guys, this is not time-lapsed. The ants were truly racing around in panic, and of course they would. 
as this was truly an ant apocalypse, traumatic for any ant colony. Thankfully, the special talcum barrier I was using from my buddy John at Ant Singapore was working like a charm, keeping the ants inside the setup. The Leviathans now had the huge task of constructing a completely new nest. But now for the very first time, they had an enormous amount of space and digging medium to do it. They were free at last to create the dream nest with endless tunnels and chambers, free of the limitations that bound them within their cramped birth test tube. I couldn't believe the Leviathans were finally in. I've been waiting months for this moment. This was a triumph for both the ants and us, AC family. I decided to come back later in the night to check up on their progress. Late at night, I came back with a flashlight and marveled at how busy the ants were. The excavation of their new home had begun. Check them out. Just from the side, I could see all their extensive tunnel work through the digging medium. These ants were determined to waste no time at all. I loved watching the ants launching the biggest digging operation of their lives. Again, none of this is time-lapsed. This is normal speed. The ants eagerly and swiftly grasped whatever chunk of cocoa fiber they could and brought it up to the surface. Huge chunks the size of boulders were lugged up from below. It always amazed me how skilled ants are at digging. This nest excavation process was happening all around the territories, which meant the ants had already anointed these virgin lands as home. Now I knew this digging operation would preoccupy the ants for the next couple of days, at least, and that foraging for food would not be on their list of priorities at the moment. I believe their main priority was carving out within the ground an extensive network of caverns and chambers into which they could safely move the brood. So I resolved to let the colony be for the next couple of days, covering the glass with a black bristol board to encourage the ants to hopefully dig up next to the glass. If we were lucky, they would. And we could still see the workings of the inner colony and even see the queen again. AC family, I placed some crushed insects down at the foot of the tongue. After three days of no food, I was certain the colony was hungry now. It was all a waiting game at this point. Were the ants going to emerge from the sea dragon's mouth, as I had hoped they would, and drag our food offerings back into the nest? Only time would tell, guys. My heart was racing with anticipation. I came back 10 minutes later and saw this. My heart nearly jumped with delight. The stench of the rotting insect carcasses had made its way to the nest and beckoned some curious and hungry scouts to the site to check it out. AC family, our plan was working so far. Once the ants identified these roaches and mealworm as food, they immediately began wafting I found food pheromones throughout the area. A scout was now headed back home through the mouth of the beast. Soon a submajor emerged to come check out the smell and rumors of food. It had a taste of a roach and soon began to fill the area with pheromones too, to verify that, yep, food's here guys. Ants communicate primarily by biochemicals called pheromones. There is a distinct pheromone for every possible message the ants need to communicate. And in this case, the submajor was covering the whole area with pheromones to incite a feeding response. Now instead of heading back home, the submajor began to have a taste of the other roach and attempted to hack away with its powerful jaws at the legs, determined to have a head start on the food. It was amazing to see this submajor using its jaws to attempt at chopping away at appendages that were still moving on the roach's body. I bet she knew help was coming soon. But I knew there was one thing I really needed to do in order to get the ants to come out from hiding. I needed to turn off the lights since our leviathans preferred hunting at night. 30 minutes later, after turning on the lights, AC family, this was what I saw. Bam! A swarm! The leviathans had emerged! Yes! And as I dreamed, the trail extended out from within the mouth of the beast. But the question now was, 
Would they carry the insect pieces back to the nest? Yes! The ants had decided to move in, the mealworm first. The lightest of the three carcasses. So cool! Our plans were working perfectly! I watched in awe as the ants carried the mealworm straight into the beast's mouth, as if swallowing it. I just love when ants do exactly what I hoped they would. Next, one of the roaches was carried by the swarm and carefully hauled up the sea dragon's tongue. Go Leviathans! Go! As much as I felt a bit bad that I was making the ants work so hard for their food, I knew that this was exactly what would be happening in the wild. You see, marauder ants, once they get really hungry, launch these huge raids, where they form these massive trails which reportedly can reach over a kilometer in length in really big colonies. So having the ants trail and work for their food was essential to bring out these very natural raiding behaviors. The ants began to lug the third and final roach back to the nest. Now guys, watch this! I wanted to see what it looked like within the throat of the beast. As they carried the roaches back to the nest, this is where things got really cool. There's a roach leg. The ants chose to race back with appendages they had managed to detach ahead of time. And another roach leg. And soon, the first roach. Whoa! Look at that coordination and cooperative effort. Good job, Leviathans. Peeking into the throat, the Leviathans were on their way, transporting their final roach home. Again, such an amazing process to witness. I was pretty sure these hungry ants couldn't wait to get these carcasses below ground to start gobbling them up. Just a few moments more, and almost home. Let's time-lapse this part a bit. And finally, with one concerted lift and push over a little ledge, the ant successfully carried the final roach onto Leviathan soils. Boom! And then it was down into the nest for the final roach. Below ground, deep in the nest, the colony had worked on expanding the tunnels ahead of time in order to fit the insect carcasses within. It was truly amazing to watch the ants in a more naturalistic setup now, where the ants could better be themselves. In fact, I was so impressed with the tunnels they had already excavated on the exposed inner side of the terrarium. But what I really couldn't wait for was to see the side of the terrarium that was covered with bristol board. I would give the ants more time to dig first. The next day, I took moss from the Leviathan's old terrarium and placed it in areas all over the body of the sea dragon. I did this in order to cover the whole body of the beast with familiar home pheromones in hopes that it would get the Leviathan's to wander further along the sea dragon's body. Yes, the ants were willing to forage at the edge of the beast's tongue, but what I really wanted to know was if the ants would wander further perhaps to the other end of the beast's body, and even to the beast's tail. Guys, you won't believe this, but two hours later, I came back and through the streams of hydrating vapor along the path I had hoped the ants would venture onto was a foraging trail. All right, it worked. I was astounded to see how far the ants were willing to trail on this night. Have a look. All the way from the mouth to the opposite end of the terrarium. The Leviathans had learned from the night before that if they wanted food, they needed to come here onto the body of the beast to find it. And so, I placed another roach here for them to find. It would only take one ant to make the discovery, and hopefully we would witness a repeat of last night's feeding procession. And eventually, one ant did, which soon attracted nearby ants to the site and sent news crawling back to the colony. I came back a few minutes later, and sure enough, a swarm had gathered to the site, and the ants began to lug the pieces on a long journey back to the nest. They needed to pull the food here, up here, all the way across, and to the beast's mouth. 
Again, this was a very long journey, but not something they weren't naturally capable of. It was even mind-blowing to see some small majors coming out to trail. This was special, and meant the colony was definitely hungry. In fact, upon closer inspection, I noticed the ants were foraging all areas of the sea dragon's body, along the beast's arms, and I could see foragers eagerly running all over the place. Even the tail! And so, I decided that tonight, I would leave them various insect treats all around the lands for them to find on their own. Mealworms, mealworm pupae, and roaches, tucked into various places of the beast's long and winding body, including at the very end of the tail. This would be the real test to see if our setup was truly suited for our leviathans. I noticed the ants danced within the hydrating fumes of fog as they enjoyed their brand new grand kingdom. I initially was worried the fog coming out of the beast's mouth might disturb the ants, but no, they seemed to not mind it at all, and could be seen traveling through it unbothered. They continued to forage and form trails through it, savoring the moisture in what would otherwise be quite dry lands. It was amazing to know that our sea dragon of rock was being fully embraced by the leviathans in a sort of incredible yet artificial symbiosis. I just love this new home for our ants and truly hoped our leviathans did too. Overnight, the ants took the time to drag all the hidden goodies they found during their night's raid back to the nest, and I watched for hours in the dark as they moved these pieces back to the nest. Have a look at them carrying this mealworm pupa down into their lair, and down the insect pieces went into the leviathan's nest. Just so cool! By morning, I came to check on the dragon's body and all the insects I had hidden for the ants to discover had been found and brought back home. Not a single insect treat was left behind. The ants made use of every single bit of nourishment. Now, we see family, there was one last thing I needed to do to fully complete this Leviathan setup. placed in the Leviathan's old castle, taken from their former terrarium, at the foot of the great sea dragon. To me, this completed the entire look of the terrarium, because in my mind, it symbolized the Leviathan's very humble beginnings. And suddenly, without warning, the sea dragon's lights turned on, illuminating its body like the mystical force that it was. Wow, our rock beast was now alive. And as I stepped back to admire the beauty of our ever majestic creation, my ant loving heart was completely full. Seeing the small castle completely dwarfed by the huge rock beast formed such a juxtaposition that I couldn't help but realize that this entire Leviathan setup and story gave us an important message. And that message was this. It doesn't matter how small you start or where you begin, but what truly matters is where you are going on your amazing journey. And that was what this epic setup and ant kingdom meant to me. Speaking of which, AC family, at the start of the video, I mentioned I'd be asking you a very important question, and it's this. What should we name this new Leviathan-themed terrarium? Leave your name suggestions in the comments, and I will choose my top five favorites for all of us to vote on in a future video. Thank you guys so much for always being so involved in these videos, helping me with making decisions, participating in polls, and caring for these little miracles we call ants. It means a lot to me that you guys seem to love the Leviathans as much as I do. And I know, together, we can grow this Leviathan kingdom further into the true rulers of the Antiverse. So if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to hit the like button to let YouTube know you enjoy these ant videos and that they're worth sharing to new audiences. And if you haven't yet, do hit that subscribe button to continue following this ongoing story of our Leviathans and join our ever-growing AC family. I can't wait to see what's next for our beloved colony. Oh yeah, and as for the remaining ants in the old terrarium, by now they had all gathered in the remaining water test tube as it was the only place suitable for them to nest. I just took this and placed it into the terrarium, collecting with a cotton ball any remaining stragglers. Now what I found remarkable was again, 
the tunnels that were made on the exposed side of the nest. Even though light was fully hitting that side, the ants still tunneled on that side. No brood or queen in sight, but they still did create tunnels up against the glass where we could see them doing their thing. And AC family, that's when my mind wandered over to the other side. I wondered, all this time, the Leviathans had been given the chance to dig to their heart's desires, perhaps dug out some impressive chambers and tunnels on the covered side of the terrarium. They had several days already to do so. What would we find behind these covered walls? Would we see an amazing network of tunnels and chambers full of brood? Would we see the queen, our titanic empress again, behind these walls? The idea filled my heart with excitement and anxiousness. It was time to open it up. First, this sidebar. Wow! And now, the main large wall. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love, forever.